Hello, there you are. Oh, I see you. Oh my, what fun, a doctor in a box. <laughs> Aren't you brilliant? <laughs> I wish the professor had thought of this. It's just, it's just Zoom. I can't really take credit for it. <laughs> oh, so modest. And you take such nice care of your teeth as well. You're off to a fine start, Dr. Nielsen, but I'll save my full evaluation for once we're done. Thank you. I'm just, just gonna write a quick note. Okay. All right, so um, actually I have your profession down as a nanny, but I, I don't see your, your name anywhere here. Nanny. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I have down that you're a nanny. And I am nanny. You're a nanny named Nanny. You're a bit slower on the uptake than I expected, but I will give you credit for catching on eventually. Okay, okay, thank you. But, but you know, for my records, I do require your, your, your legal name. Lanny, Phoebe Figalilly. But you do charge by the hour, so let's not dilly-dally with any further introductions, shall we? Okay, yeah. Phoebe, figure, figure, uh, okay, I'll just, I'll figure out the spelling on that later. Uh, so, um, Nanny, um, why did you want to see me? To be absolutely forthright with you, Dr. Nielsen, I'm afraid I might be losing my, my mojo, as you Yanks would say your mojo. Okay, I see. Um, uh, can you give me an example? Well, several things come to mind, but to begin with, when I was nanny for the professor's children, Hal, Butch, Prudence, and their dog Waldo, I had a signature look. Oh, interesting. Oh, what was that? Well, on outings, I would wear my navy blue Inverness cape and, of course, a matching deer stalker hat. A cape and a, a, a deer stalker hat? Yes. Imagine Sherlock Holmes as a sensible, genuine young woman on the go, armed with discerning tastes and plenty of panache and sensibility. Uh -huh. Okay, well, uh, dressing like Sherlock Holmes, uh, was your signature look <laughs> as a nanny? Yes. It was perfectly suited for English outings, but to be frank, it was a little bit warm for Southern California. As I imagine your Anderson Cooper wannabe toupee must be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I can see how your that that look would, would um, get warm. Uh-huh. I must say, I was quite stylish when I was driving around in Arabella. I'm not boasting, mind you. I just find it better to state the facts without stumbling over false modesty. <laughs> Don't you agree? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Arabella. She's my automobile, my car. A canary yellow Model T Ford with the top that folds back. Oh, you mean a convertible? Oh, aren't you clever? Oddest thing, Arabella's radio only plays broadcasts from the 1930s, which I remember very well, of course. You remember broadcasts from the 1930s? Oh, like it was yesterday. Nanny, how old are you? Oh, my dear boy, that question would normally get you sent to your room. But since you're my doctor, I'll allow it. Uh, let's see, when I first went to work for the professor, I was somewhere between 29 and 129. I think it best for a lady to not be too specific. You're, you're saying your age was between 29 and 100 and... You look good. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Well, one can never eat too many vegetables. Um, are, are there other ways you feel like your mojo might be slipping? Yes. Actually, I'm not hearing the music like I used to. What, what music? Well, 
people thought I was a bit mystical and unexplained things happened when I was around. Really? Who thought that? People. Oh, uh, well, can you be specific? Surely. Most people. Uh -huh. Well, that, that, that pinned it down. You're welcome. You see, when I would have a premonition or a twinkle in my eye before something magical happened, there would be a little tinkle of music. Uh, a, a, a tinkle of music. Uh, where did this where did this tinkle of music come from? I don't know, but people heard it. Well, can you be more specific? Certainly, most people. Thank you for that that specificity. Mm -hmm. Oh, my pleasure. But sadly, I haven't heard that tinkle in quite a while. Uh, uh, yeah, backing up, um, you mentioned that you had premonitions. Can, can you give me an example? Well, I almost always know that a phone or a doorbell will ring before it does. Really? Yes. I'm nearly 99.9% .9 accurate. I've saved a fortune on caller ID, but unfortunately, the, the tinkle's gone. Mm. Uh. Okay, well, the tinkle, the tinkle is gone from your premonitions. Uh-huh, I see, yeah. Uh, how did your time with the professor and his children end? Well, it was all really rather wonderful until we moved. And then Monday night football did us in. I see. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. What, is that? what does that mean? I haven't the foggiest. And that's what I was told right before I was given my pink slip. It, it sounds like an abrupt ending. Exactly. It was the 0.1% of the time I didn't see it coming. Are, are you still in touch with the family? No, I think it best for the children if one makes a clean break, don't you? However, I do occasionally catch prudence on the telly. She became one of those real housewives of Beverly Hills, you know. Interesting. To be absolutely honest, I didn't see that one coming either. Oh. Oh, Dr. Nielsen, you're about to get a package delivered. I am. D did you get me something? No, but Violet, your sweet mother, she did. Cookies, I believe. Oh, dear. Apparently your mother isn't as concerned about the fatty deposits in your man breasts as I am. Uh, how, how do you know my mother's name? Wait for it. Now. There's a UPS truck. How? Did you hear the tinkle just then? I did. Perhaps talking about the old days got the juices flowing again. Did you hear it as well? I... How oh, utterly fantastic. You know what? I feel like taking Arabella for a spin. Thank you, Dr. Nielsen. Job well done. I'm giving you an A for the day. I'd give you an A plus, but we didn't make our bed this morning, did we? Toodaloo. Cheery bye. Female Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Between 29 and 129. I did hear the tinkle. How did she know I didn't make my... My man breasts?